doing an initial, uh, it's not a real layout, it's just defining the, the boundaries of the building, um, because we had a earth collapse due to major rain and the excavation. Just so we know where to put the dirt, we're not going to put the dirt where the tires are going to do, so I'm getting a general outline of where the tires are going to go. As soon as we move the dirt, then we can do an actual layout with our string lines, an accurate layout of the tires. This right here represents the boundaries of our tires for the actual back north side of the building. This big, bold, white, rectangular looking thing represents the south side, which is going to support the greenhouse, and the greenhouse is right here. In order to create a layout for our tire walls, we tie string lines between stakes. We start by establishing the inside line of our north tire wall. To do this, we drive a stake here, and another here, both beyond the outside dimension of our building. We then tie a string line between them. We then do the same for the inside line of our east and west walls. You can now see how we will lay out our tire wall. Notice that our turns are defined by centering a tire where the string lines cross. See that little gap in the northwest turn of our wall? That is common in tire wall construction. If the gap is large enough, we can fill it with a small tire that gets squeezed in between. If the gap is too small for a squeezer, we fill the gap with concrete. All that will be explained in our upcoming tire work video. Next, we need to define our east and west wing walls. Just like with the north and east and west walls, we pull another string line beyond the outside dimension of our building to define the outside line of our tire wing walls. We then pull another line to define the outside line of our east and west walls. This gives us the crossing we need to lay out our tire wall turns. Shut up, bird. Tire work goes from there to there. So our actual inside building dimension is 12 feet. So, like I said, we're gonna put a stake here, and we're gonna put a stake here, and that's gonna establish our orientation to the south. So Brad, if I look at my, my compass here, um, south is pretty much gonna orient this thing basically that way. Um, see that, you guys see that tree over there? You know that one I'm looking at? <laughs> that tree in the middle of the forest over there? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, the dead one. Yeah, like the dead one. Ones. That's going to be our benchmark. So, it's funny because, you know, we don't have a, we're not, we don't have a survey, a plot survey. We're nowhere, we know we're within the property boundaries. You know, a typical house, you know, you'll have a whole site survey from a surveyor and then the architects do their drawings of where the house is located on that property. We're not going to worry about that. We're building a building here. You know, we know it's Brad's property here. You know, so, so where I pick this first stake to go is just more of a site consideration because of our mucky flippity glop. Um, that's our official term for it. So we had some stakes somewhere. So the point is with the first one, you just arbitrarily pick a point. Yeah, it's pretty arbitrary. Um, but I'm also looking at where the walls are going to wing out, and, you know, we don't want to constrict the pathway too much there. We don't want to spend our whole day digging out this cliff side. So um, I'm, I'm making those considerations right now. And then what I'm going to try to do is get this other back stake pretty much so this back line perpendicular is, would be perpendicular to south. Somebody's laying an egg. Alrighty. And also what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run this long. Um, we'll, we'll pull a 6, 8, 10, Brad. Okay. In a moment. I'm not sure if this is where I want it yet. I'm just going to pull this string kind of taut. Okay. 